Well, let me ask you this, mm -hmm. because you've said controversially, not really, that uh, <laughs> viruses are not living. Um, uh, defend yourself. <laughs> so, are viruses alive or not? So I've seen many people say, oh, they have to be. They, they have nucleic acids, they evolve, they mutate. That's all true, but they don't do it on their own. The particles in my mug are just not doing any of that unless they get into a cell. Mm. So a virus-infected cell is alive. I totally agree with that because, in fact, when a virus gets in a cell, it converts it into a virus-making factory, if you will. It's no longer a cell. It's a Some people call it a viro cell. I don't really like that, but it's fine. So that's what I'm talking about. The particle is not alive. You can have your virus-infected cell as, as alive, but the particle, it just would not do anything forever without getting inside of a cell. But once it's in a cell, it's, it, it, it is alive then, but it's no longer a particle. It's taken apart and nucleic acid is moving around the cell. It's making proteins. Eventually, it makes new particles. And then those particles released from the cell, they're not living anymore. So it's kind of, I think it's kind of like a spore, a spore of a, uh, or a seed. Although it's, the seed just doesn't work because the seeds, the cells in the seed have the ability to make their own energy and so forth. But a bacterial spore, and it's the same thing, doesn't do anything unless you add water and nutrients and then it starts to divide. But it doesn't need to get into a cell. It's very different from a virus. So that's why the particle. And when people think of virus, they're always thinking of the particle. And that's why I say it can't be alive because the particle can't do anything on its own. But if you think of a virus as an organism with a particle phase in a, in a part in a cell, then it makes sense to be alive. And by the way, when you say particle, you're referring to that structure that you've been mentioning, some right. types of membrane and not, that, that's, right. that's been called, what is that, viron particle or something? The virion. Like, so virion. it's what you should have here, I'll send you one, and then you can refer to What's it What's the sexiest one to have? Like what, what in terms of particles to have on the table? <laughs> well, unfortunately, the ones that you can 3D print. They're the, oh, they're not going to be super. They're, they're, only, they're the ones that we know the structures of, right? So someone sent me last year a 3D model of SARS-CoV-2, and it's beautiful. It's actually cracked open so you can see the RNA oh, wow. and the spikes are sticking out and they even put some antibodies sticking onto the spikes. And that's I super mean, cool. when I show this on a live stream, people love this. They go, oh my God, that's beautiful. Yeah. It is, it's absolutely gorgeous. I have that, I have my virus that I worked on most of my career, polio virus. I have a 3D model of that, which I actually just had made. It's gorgeous. And you can have it made in any color you want, right? 